so our next topic is water resources water is important to us because human body itself is made up of 72 percent of water water moves through different biotic and abiotic component in hydrological cycle also there are many things which depends on water like our industries like production of energy like uh, agriculture we also there are some also plants and animals who live in water so it's their habitat and they cannot survive without water we are using water for our domestic uses like bathing cooking and drinking purposes and some of the industries they are completely dependent on water like salt industry water are of two types one is fresh water and one is salt water fresh water which is not having a salty taste while the salt water is having the salty taste fresh water examples are river lake ponds etc while the salt water examples are sea water ocean and marine water they are also classified into hard water as well as soft water hard water contains mainly calcium and magnesium ions while soft water does not contains calcium and magnesium ions there may be other ions present there but mainly calcium and magnesium ions are absent water cycle water cycle first of all water from the oceans that um, converts into the vapors with the help of the solar energy and this process is known as evaporation this vapors these vapors they make smaller smaller droplets and finally they make the clouds by the process of condensation now these clouds gets heavier and they cannot hold the water more so it comes back to the earth in the form of rain or snow and that process is known as precipitation all the water coming on the ground gets accumulated to the uh, rivers and other things and come back to the ocean and this process is known as collection some of the water goes into the ground and that is called as infiltration there are some plants also that also evaporate the water and that is known as transpiration there are also some of the process by which solid itself solid ice directly evaporates into the vapor without converting into liquid and that is known as sublimation so this whole process is known as water cycle sources of fresh water we have plenty of water on the earth but most of the water almost 97.5 percent of water is salt water which is available in oceans only we are having 2.5 percent of fresh water this fresh water is also available in the glaciers or ice caps up to 79 percent and up to 20 percent of water is available as the ground water on the surface there is only one percent water available also this water is available in the form of lakes mostly 52 percent of the water is in lakes 38 percent of water in soil and remaining water as water vapor living organism and rivers they contain only one percent of the total water we have four different sources of fresh water ground water surface water frozen water and rain water ground water is also known as aquifer so an aquifer is the underground layer of water so an aquifers are defined into two are of two types aquifers are of two types one is confined aquifer and one is unconfined aquifers as the name suggests confined aquifers they are sandwiched between two layers of less permeable membrane so they are confined they cannot be used because they are completely protected or sandwiched between two different layers while unconfined aquifers they are available in the upper part of the surface and they can be used the aquifers having water table in it 
are also called unconfined aquifers so they are available on the surface and can be used by the human beings next comes the surface water surface water means in the term in the form of river lake pond etc so all these water are generally used for drinking and other purposes also next is frozen water frozen water available on the mountain caps can be used and it's also available in the rivers and during the summer season when the temperature is high and this frozen salt gets melt gets melted and it's coming in the form of a river and finally the rain water whatever water is coming from the rain is rain water and that can also be used as for drinking and other purposes over exploitation of ground water when we are taking the ground water we are extracting too much of ground water as compared to the filling rate of the ground water then it will be called as the over exploitation of ground water generally we are using water for main three purposes first is agriculture industries and domestic so in the global scenario almost 70% of water is used for agriculture while 22% is used for the industries while in developed countries where the industries are very strong so they are using 59% of water for industries while 30% of water for agriculture in developed developing countries we are using almost 80% 80% in india also we are using for the agriculture while 15% for industries and only 5% for domestic uses so because of the over exploitation of groundwater we have several problems concerned about this so one is the reduced surface water flow so if there are no or less groundwater then there will be very less surface water also there will be sharp decline in water table water table will go down then there will be loss of vegetation as well as wildlife habitat because of less water availability salinity problem as the water is going down concentration of water increases that means amount of salt in that increases and finally ground subsidence ground subsidence means the land goes inside because of the hollow inside the land so that is ground subsidence water calamities flood and droughts flood can be considered as the accumulation of large amount of water at one place at any place which cannot be handled by the drainage system of that particular area so that means there is accumulation of huge amount of water which is uh, which cannot go away because of from the drainage system of the area and it depends on the climate nature of the collecting basins streams soils vegetation cover amount of snow and the rainfall so this is flood where there is accumulation of huge amount of water and floods can be divided into three part one is flash flood river floods and coastal floods flash flood due to the sudden heavy rainfall or dam failure and river obstructions there is suddenly rise in the water level and that kind of flood is called as flash flood and this happens within very short period of time second is river floods this happens every year at the bank of the biggest bigger rivers and because of the heavy rainfall all the water level in the river rises and it covers the nearby area of the uh, river banks so that is precipitation precipitation over large area and or by melting of the snow so level of the river rises that kind of flood is known as river flood and coastal flood it may be due to cyclone activities like hurricanes winds and induced storms so this can this will be coming only on the coastal regions where there are there are possibility of cyclone and hurricanes for example is tsunami when the there was because of a disaster it came of it came and what about drought a drought is a condition in which a region suffer from severe deficiency in its water supply so there will be lack of water supply or lack of water availability this is mainly due to con constantly below average rainfall 
they are also of three types one is meteorological drought hydrological drought and agriculture drought meteorological drought means decrease in actual rainfall that means if in some area there is uh, there is rainfall which is below average rainfall then we can consider that it is a meteorological drought second is hydrological drought if the water reservoirs are getting dried up in that particular area so we can say that hydrological droughts are happening and finally agricultural drought so this is happening because of the inadequate soil moisture that means moisture from the soil goes away and lands becomes not becomes unuseful for the agriculture purposes conflict over water in this case we will study three different cases for example nile water conflict this is between egypt and ethiopia they are fighting for the water of nile secondly interstate dispute where tamil nadu and karnataka are fighting over the kaveri water and then finally industry versus community like coca cola beverages company in kerala where the community people they are fighting against coca cola company for the water for the ground water so what are the solutions to water crisis first of all educate people to use less water install water saving devices like self closing tap and dual flush toilets and use a decentralized waste water recycling system in homes apartments campuses and industries using natural methods like planted filters how can we save water for the agriculture purposes replace water hungry crops by those requiring less water for example rice rice is a water hungry crop secondly promote crop that can tolerate salty water get more crops per drop use drip irrigation sprinkled irrigation etc return to indigenous species that are with that can withstand drought switch to organic and natural farming and educate people to change to vegetarian diet because that requires very less water for production and for the saving water in industries we can go for the catch the rain water where it falls so collect the rain water secondly implement rain water harvesting in urban and rural areas tamil nadu is the state where government has made it it compulsory to install the rain water harvesting system in each and every buildings retain water on land as long as possible through check dams and counter dams counter bends allowing it to percolate into the ground restore traditional systems of ponds and lake there are some many more uh, ways we can uh, we can save water that is to adopt decentralized water system to water supply and sanitation plan many as many small local catchment in place of large ones implement a large number of small scale schemes and adopt fairer policies give control of water sources to the community prize water properly and remove inequities in the in the excess of water